Well, hello everybody. This is Christine Bertram coming to you from the Cards by Christine studio here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And today I have a lovely card that uses the petal palette stamp set and framelits. This is a double set. It says here one of two. And if you flip it over, I have two of two. Uh, when you get stamp sets that have two sets, what you can do is insert one of the sheets from the other set inside the back panel of your case and then you can put your stamps back to back like this and you in essence save a little room on your shelf for another set of stamps so that's why I combine them so this is petal palette and there are coordinating framelits that go with them called petals and more thinlets dies we're going to be using a bunch of the pieces out of here to make this card um, I want to set a disclaimer right away that this card is available on Pinterest that is where I pinned it and I copied and cased it from. I just love this card when I saw it and I really didn't change much about it whatsoever. So just so you know, I didn't come up with this idea by myself, but I definitely want to show you how to make this card. It is phenomenal. I just love the old olive mixed with the espresso and the copper with that branch. It's super, super pretty. Um, it's very, very like eye catching for me. So I did this card at a class not too long ago. So. I will go ahead and get started. Uh, to, to start, the, um, the base here is early espresso. So the early espresso is your traditional mat. It's basically a half a sheet of paper. So you've got your eight and a half by 11, and what you would do is cut it in half this way. If you choose to score it, that will be nice. It'll make it for an easy fold for you. If you don't wanna score it first, that's quite all right. Just make sure you line up your corners good. I bring in my bone folder to help burnish my edges. So that's what that is used for if you see that in the catalog. So we have our early espresso and that is our, our mat or our card base. Then we're going to bring in our old olive piece, um, which is four inches by five and a quarter. That is a traditional mat. And what it does is it takes and leaves an eighth of an inch margin all the way around your card. You don't need to do anything special with this piece. Then there is another piece on top of here in Very Vanilla. Now this Very Vanilla, I like to work in sixteenths of an inch, so I'm sorry if that's confusing, but I seem to work really well with that to make a slightly like, the reason I did sixteenth is if I would have taken off a whole nother eighth, the same amount of green would be showing as brown, and I wanted just a hair less green showing. So what I did is I cut this at three and one sixteenth times no I'm sorry that's the vanilla oh yeah vanilla three and one sixteenth times three and thirteen sixteenths so um, that nestles right into this piece right here the olive piece um, there is one more piece of vanilla that will fit on the inside and it in essence is the four by five and a quarter mat so but we'll save that for a little bit later so with this piece here all we're doing to that piece is stamping the stamp from the set that has the little dots on it and we're going to be using the crumb cake ink so this is the old style of case so you're just going to flip that open and I'm going to set these three piece, two pieces aside so this right here is stamped it looks pretty light and I may have just re-inked my pad so we're going to see what this looks like so um, when you re-ink your pads, you end up getting them to be like a little bit darker because you've just re-inked them. So I was just checking to see how dark that was. If I thought that was too dark and I wanted to do a little bit lighter, that's what it would look at second strength. And I think that's what I'm going to do for this is do it at second strength. So this stamp doesn't go the length of this piece of paper. So what you have to do is you're going to ink it up, stamp off once, and I'm about two finger widths away here. Um, you're, it doesn't matter that you uh, need to use two of these because it doesn't matter, they'll be behind the, the oval piece here. So I'm just gonna stamp one right here, and I'm gonna go back and get more ink, stamp off, flip my paper around, and I'm going to go about the same distance away. Now again, it doesn't matter what happens in the middle because that's gonna get covered up. All right, so we're working on our mat here. We're done with that. I always stamp off before I go into my stamp and scrub and clean that up. Okay, so now that we got that done, 
this layer can go ahead and get glued on to this layer. So what I'm gonna do, I uh, keep my liquid glues in a, like a cottage cheese container. Um, if you had a little jar or something, what happens is the glue, uh, need, I always use the fine tip on here, not the thick end. And if you have it sitting on this end, the glue is down at that base. So I always keep my liquid glue in a little container so that the glue is always ready for me to use and it's at the tip. So, all right, we're gonna do is adhere this piece to our old olive piece, just like so. Okay, and then you gotta be careful when you're using liquid glue, if you, you move it around, it might squish away from where you have it, but so you just gently press that down. Then we can go ahead and put glue on the back of our old olive piece. Now, if you like to use mono adhesive or a different type of adhesive, that is more than all right. It's your, I guess, pick your poison is what they say. So pick whatever adhesive you like the best. I like to use liquid glue because it really creates a tight bond with the paper. Okay, so now we've got our base pretty much done. We have an olive here, an olive, <laughs> an oval, uh, and I have a scrap of vanilla. The scrap is about three and a half by two and a half. And on the scrap, what we're gonna do is go ahead and stamp in pear pizzazz, we're gonna stamp the leaf from the set. So this is that old style case again. So it opens really loosely and nice. All right, so when you're using the foam ink pads, just remember you don't have to press super hard. You just wanna put good even pressure to get ink on it. So now that we have that inked up, what I'm gonna do is stamp that about in the middle and then closer to the top and just puts a nice image on there for us. And that's all we need the pear pizzazz for, so I'm gonna scoot that out of the way. Okay, so then our stitched oval. So that comes from the Stitch Shapes set. There's ovals, squares, and circles. So I'm pulling out the biggest oval from this set, and what we'll do is pull the big shot in, and I'm just gonna line that up on the big shot like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way, and grab my big shot in. And so make sure you can see that okay so I've got my magnetic platform I've got a really loved plate that I always use on the bottom and I'm gonna just line this up I'm trying to get it so that my center of my top leaf here is kind of in the middle and my stem is kind of in the middle as well so that works for me I'm actually maybe more like that okay when you're using the big shot you want to make sure your plates are lined up here if you have them crooked like that and try to put it in, it'll eat the edge. It happens. It's like a monster. It eats plastic. Okay. So that just, you can throw that piece away and this just pops down. I always just start at the top and that pops out just like that. Okay. Oop, there he goes. So I'm going to get this out of the way. Okay. So we, now we have our oval ready to go here. All right, we also have um, a piece of copper foil paper here. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that I started doing. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Stampin' Up! has, they're called multi-purpose adhesive sheets. And what they do is create a sticker for you. There's, I think, 10 sheets in here, and you can cut this down to the size that you need. And what you do is, we'll see if I can do it, Oh yeah, there's a peel here sign. So what you're gonna do, because this is really hard to put little glue behind here and to get it stick without getting glue all over the place. So what I'm doing is I'm using one of these adhesive sheets. And so this says peel here. So there's a little ridge right here. And you gotta be really careful. This stuff is super duper sticky. So this is like wax paper, so that's garbage. What I'm doing is I've already cut like a piece of copper foil where this branch is going to come out of and ideally what I'm doing is going to put this piece behind the foil and create a sticker then when I cut that out so I'm just going to put that such like this so you want to be careful though here because this piece right here would put stick all over and we don't want that so so what we have to do is cut some of that stick off so that it doesn't get in the big shot. So you want to be careful 
when you're cutting this because it's super duper sticky. Um, you don't want to use a scissors that you designate for ribbon. You want to use a scissors that you don't mind getting goo on it. <laughs> so, all right, so I got that cut off of there. So now basically what we're going to do is when we're ready, we're going to go ahead and cut this and in essence make a sticker for the part where we put that. So this is ready to cut out in the Big Shot in a moment. We have a piece of vanilla here, and this is just a teeny tiny scrap. Like everybody's got little scraps around, so don't, no size for that. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the bird, and you're gonna use your early espresso ink and stamp the bird right on. The, ah, does that ever happen to you? Well, it happens to me too. <laughs> so, oh, we're gonna stick him on there. We're gonna show him who's boss, and we're gonna make sure that doesn't happen when you flip it over, okay. Paper has two sides to it, so go ahead and flip your paper. Ah, he fell off again. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what to do when this happens. Um, one of the tricks is to use multi-purpose liquid glue, and what you do is just put a little dot right on your stamp and smear that around. And once that dries, because this is like a craft glue, it's really tacky. And so it creates like a little bit of stick and it'll help it stick to this block better. The other trick is to use your mono adhesive tape. And I don't have that here because I don't generally use mono adhesive a lot, but you have your mono adhesive, your snail or your tape runner. You're going to put a little bit of that right on your stamp and that will help it stick to your block better. Now, if you can see on here, I'm not sure if you can see, but it creates like this little bit of residue on here and that's okay. You can use rubbing alcohol and a cotton pad and or a paper towel and just wipe that right off and then your blocks will come super clean. But what happens is you can see now that's created like this little bit of stick. So by just putting that little bit of multi-purpose or the liquid glue on there, he's not going to do that. So, or she, whatever it is. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to ink that up. And so if your, your stamps have a tendency of falling off the blocks, Stampin' Up! is working on a new formula so that the sticker sheets are more sticky. So go ahead and ink that up. Come over here, stamp your bird, and then don't forget to stamp off. Get that white piece of paper or whatever paper you're working on. Get it all inked up. That will stay help stay out of your stamp and scrub. Okay, as long as we've got this open, what we're going to do is, if we looked at the inside here, it says for everything. So it says thank you for everything. So I have a stamp here that says for everything. So we're going to set the bird over here and he's ready to get cut out. And I have my very vanilla. As long as I got my ink open, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this. So what I do for lining up my blocks to try to make sure they're straight when I stamp, I try to like look at the edge here to see that straight compared to the edge up here. And if I put that straight, then I can pretty much rest assured that as long as I line up my block right, that hopefully it stamps straight. So that's my rule with that or my trick. So I'm going to try to line that up. Good even pressure, straight down, straight up. So, all right, that worked out nice. Okay, so you see that there's a branch down here. So I'm going to pull back my branch. I always love to decorate the inside of the, stamp, the card to match like the outside. So find something that you stamped on the outside. And if you didn't stamp anything on the outside, Go through your stamps and find something cool that you would like to put on the bottom corner. So I use the pair of pizzazz again. If you want to put that on your envelope, go for it. It'll look super pretty on the envelope. The person that gets it will have a, they'll be like, get this in the mail. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so pretty. So I would definitely recommend stamping your envelope too. So our inside's done. I'm just going to set that inside the card for now. All right, what else? This label here. So I have a very vanilla scrap. So when you're cutting your mats down, you end up with pieces of scrap on the end. That's all this really is. This is a framelit from the Petals and More framelit set. And what we're going to do is we're going to stamp the thank you in our Versa mark. And then we are going to pour the copper embossing powder over the top and we're going to heat it up. Super, ooper duper cool. So when I started stamping 17 years ago, this was one of the first things I ever did and I fell in love with it. And here we are. So this embossing buddy is 17 years old, <laughs> it's the original bag that it came in, and um, it's loved. So if you buy an embossing buddy, just know they last for a very long time. Again, I got that 17 years ago. <laughs> it was one of the first things I bought from Stampin' Up. This is a chalk, um, powdery chalk 
in the inside here and what it does is you're just going to rub that against your paper it helps with static electricity it helps so that your embossing powder doesn't stick to the paper where you don't want it to stick and we're using a versamark pad which is a highly like a pigmented pad um, it's super gooey and so that helps the embossing powder to stick to it so you're going to just stamp that right there you can't see that but that's okay what's going to happen is you're going to pull in your embossing powder I generally keep my embossing powders in a container so that when you pour them, they land in the container and not all over your space. So this uh, embossing powder is, they're teeny tiny pieces of plastic pellets. And you see that I missed and all, it goes all over. I even got a little here, so I'm just going to scoop that. We'll put that in the garbage. But I had a little bit of, um, my stamp made a little halo there. If that happens, just peel that off of there. I'm just going to tap this a little bit more and then what happens is it should not have little ones stuck all over so that's good so what you can do is these little spoons or the little scoops or get a spoon and keep it in here with it but what what you can do is once you get a whole pile of it on the bottom there just go ahead and scoop it back in but for now I'm just gonna shut that up and I'm gonna put my cover on I'm, I'm always cautious when I'm using embossing powder next to the embossing gun that gun is like an industrial strength blow dryer and it will blow stuff all over the place. So I'm going to get rid of that into the garbage. Okay, so now this is the heat tool from Stampin' Up. Um, there's two settings, a uh, one and a two. It's like low and high. And what you're going to do is like just give it a second to, to heat up. It needs, it's like in a cold position right now and it needs just to heat up. So when you're embossing, once that's heated up, I always just start on one end and I work my way, work my way to the other end. And you're going to see this, what happens is it kind of turns into this glossy, smooth plastic. It melts. Look at that. That is exactly how I got hooked on stamping. <laughs> I love watching that melt. And what I do then is swap it over. The gun is hot and you do not want to hurt your fingers by any means or cause blisters. So. You want to keep your thumb away from it. Some people pull in um, clothespins and hold it with a clothespin, but isn't that pretty? Okay, so with this though, it's a little bit warm, so I wouldn't recommend putting it right in your Big Shot to cut it because it's like, it could be, it's, it's dry, but when you put that much force and pressure on it with the Big Shot, it could stick to that, and because it's warm, it could like stick to the plate. So, so we'll, we'll cut that in a moment, but we're going to cut this and our bird and our branch all at the same time. So I'm going to bring the Big Shot back in here, and we'll go ahead and cut all the rest of this stuff. So I'm going to set these guys all off to the side while I make some room. Okay. So here's our Big Shot again. And some people think that they can only cut like one thing at a time on the Big Shot, and that is not true. You can fit as much as you can on there. I have had like up to 10 different things on here all at the same time. And that is quite all right. It makes it more efficient. So with this guy though, um, the magnetic platform works great uh, for holding your framelits down. But sometimes they do want to wiggle. I call it the magnetic like forces of the world coming together here. Um, it like will want to move on you. So I've got this tape. I usually try to show you guys this. I got it on Amazon. It's low-tech artist tape. It's like the backside of a post-it note, so it's not very sticky. If you use something really strong, it could rip your paper as you are pulling it up. So I, when, when I don't want something to move on me and have to redo it, I definitely use tape. So this bird seemed like he was pretty safe, but I definitely don't want my label wiggling. And this, I've got a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm going to line up my plate on here. And you've got to be careful when you put your plate down, not that it wiggles around on you. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this through. Now, the bird and the thank you are called framelits. And they will pop out really easily just with one round on the Big Shot. So that's easy. We got those two done. Now, this branch was a little bit more tedious. Uh, it's really intricate. And so what I do is I generally pick it up and I turn it this way. I don't know, is that 180 degrees? Something like that. Because um, then it's like um, the Big Shot's putting pressure on the die in a different direction. I find that that cuts it out better. So 
let's just do that two times. And so that was a round trip on this one. So what happens then is, look at that. When you do that, like how that kind of just pulls off. Whereas if you didn't do that and you only did it one time, it's not going to pull off. And what's happening is our sticker piece is coming off too. So like this, in essence, is the backing of the sticker. And now what's happened is this is sticky. So we've created a sticker where we put that. So this is where I bring in a piercing tool and we'll pick that all out. So I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to show you how this works. So now you could have your take your pick tool or your pokey tool, but because you have these insides, they need to get poked out and it's easier to do that while it's in the die like this and then just look at it really quick. Now there's stickers on too so these little pieces are going to stick all over your fingers just to let you know. You'll find them later stuck in your hair, you'll find them in your shirt, under your toes, everywhere. So, But it's so much easier to have this branch as a sticker than it is to have to glue it all. Okay, so I think I got all the pieces out. Then what I do, when I have a branch thing like this, I don't start at this end and work my work backwards. I start at the branch end because then what happens is it kind of like pulls out naturally that way for me. Um, and that's a little tight, so what I'll do is go back and like poke, poke those guys just like that. Okay, that got that out. If they ever like aren't just coming right out, then I'll poke them a little bit where they need a little help so oh yeah come on you can do it okay cool I did notice for some reason I don't know how it happened but my branch is kind of like cut in half but that's okay we're gonna go right over to our oval here and we're gonna gently place our branch on here so the bottom is kind of sticking out over the edge and do you see what's happening I didn't have to put any glue on here and the reason I made that piece of adhesive sheet smaller is because I didn't necessarily want sticker under the part that is hanging over. So look at that. And so I don't have tape over there. Super duper cool. I love it. Okay. So this part is done. Um, then what we'll do is put some dimensionals on the back side of this oval. So I pull in my Stampin' dimensionals, the mini ones. That's what I like to use. So I will probably use four. That's what I generally do with something this size. And you got nails, go ahead, pick them off. If you need to use your piercing tool, that's all right too. But you can see that those little pieces are going to, they're everywhere. So bring your card method base in here, and that's just going to get set right on the top here to the left hand side. Then what we can do is pull in our banner or our label here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put a dimensional on the right side, just like that. And because I already have my oval popped up, I'm not going to put another dimensional right on this side. I'm actually going to just put a little bit of liquid glue over here. So if your glue is not coming out on your first attempt, because mine is getting low, if you just tap it like that on your work surface, it comes out really fast, or it comes out really good. All right, so go ahead and... Put your label on here, so like that. So now you got it that this oval was already popped up with dimensionals. That's why I put liquid glue on the side, so that makes this all the same height. All right, we got our little Tweety Dum here. So I've got a crumb cake blend. Now, normally when you use blends, you want to use a memento ink pad, but I didn't want a blackbird. I really wanted a brown bird. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to not hit where the espresso ink is uh, just so that it doesn't cause me any problems but the ink pad the espresso is a water-based pad so it shouldn't have any problems anyways but I'm gonna just stay away from the bird so the ink part all right that's it if you wanted to I shaded a little bit better there in this case what I did is I just colored him and he's okay he's a happy little guy so that's done. What you're going to do is pull in some more dimensionals and you're going to pop your little birdie up. Okay, he's going to be nestled on the banner. So sometimes like 
I don't know, you see birds off in Never Never Land, they're like all over the place and like not grounded, and that's fine if they look like they're flying, but a bird should be standing on something. So I've got him kind of nestled right on here on the banner, and he's kind of like right in the middle of the branch, like he's in his element, he's in his home. So, all right, we're almost done with this card. What we're gonna do is go ahead and glue our inside mat in. So you can see I tapped my glue because it's getting low. And once you've got your glue, you can, so the liquid glue is awesome because once you get that in here, if you need to wiggle, you see what I'm doing? I'm wiggling it so I can eyeball all the way around to make sure I'm straight. If you were using tape runner, that would not be so easy to do. You'd have to rip it off if it got crooked. Okay, well last but not least, we want to pull in the diamonds. I've got two diamonds on the side here. So here's a good example with our picky tool. Some people like to pick up with their picky tool and then you can kind of see where you want to put it and then put your finger over the top. If you have nails, I like to just pick it up with my fingernail and kind of place it where you want. Some people use scissors like this and just pick it up like that and put it. So there's different ways to get your gems on without stressing you out. So, all right. Well, there you go. We did it. We made a beautiful card. This card would be perfect. So in this set, there are other words. You could have done congratulations, from the heart, I just love you, best wishes. So very versatile card. You could have made this for any occasion pretty much. Uh, I did it as a thank you just because I thought that was pretty and I needed a thank you card. So um, if you enjoyed watching this video, you are definitely welcome to uh, go look on my blog, my Facebook page for more other ideas and inspiration. I love stamping with you. I love sharing tips and tricks. And you can find me at www.cardsbychrisb.com. My Facebook page is Cards by Christine. Go check out what I've got out there. If you're local, I'd love for you to stop in and have a class with me. And if you're not local, thanks for stamping with me. I'm going to continue to make some more videos once a week and get them published. If you want to place an order, the orders are always greatly appreciated. I'm trying to grow my business and every little bit helps. So it keeps me doing what I love and I love sharing what I love with you. So thanks for watching and I'll be back again soon. Bye.